Good morning and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask that all present respect the instructions given by our ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a, meter, a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times in the church. At the, end, at the time of communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask you to follow the ushers' directions for leaving the church. Our gathering chant today is number 498 in the CBW, Lord of Creation, to you be all praise. And our presider today is Archbishop Peter Hunt. Please stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We may worthily enter into this celebration. We pause to call to mind God's goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from a letter of Paul to the Romans. I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Who knew that the whole creation has been growing 
groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we will wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to Psalm 126. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. and our tongue with shouts of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great for us and we rejoiced. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. <clears throat> Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourse in the desert of the May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? And to what should I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that once someone took and sowed in the garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. And again Jesus said, To what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading today, Paul, writing from prison in Rome, writes to the people and talks about the facts uh, that uh, there's suffering that's going on. But he says that this suffering in its, of the present time is not worth comparing with the glory about to reveal to us. And he speaks about hope and that hope saves us, that the hope uh, of what is to come, uh, our trust that it will, will all work out is what brings us to carry on and to see the sufferings of the present as minimal in comparison to what is coming. And he uses the image and the analogy of labor pains. That um, at this point he's saying the whole of creation is groaning in labor pains, uh, bringing forth new life. In the second, in the psalm, uh, the psalmist speaks, uses uh, the analogy of the sower going out to sow seeds, that he goes out, he's laboring, it's difficult, he's suffering, but then he goes out and reaps a harvest and he's full of joy. And in the gospel, Jesus, talking about the kingdom of heaven, uses the analogy of a mustard seed that grows and of yeast that's used in the making of bread. In all three of the readings today, we see that, um, an, or that call to hope uh, and to reading the signs of the times, uh, to recognizing that, uh, yes, there are challenges. Uh, yes, uh, there are times when uh, we're, we're not in a time of great joy, but hope allows us in our, in our experience of the world and, and of life, allows us always to be people of hope, the people that recognize that the Lord and his goodness is working and that he is doing great things. And so we can, as Paul says, wait patiently for the Lord to work. As we continue in our Mass today, we ask the Lord to give us the grace we need to be patient today and to be people of hope, uh, that in the midst of whatever trials may face us, that we may trust with confidence in him. And we pray not only for ourselves, but for those who, who struggle much more than us, for those for whom today is a terrible day of suffering that in the midst of their trials they may be people of hope and they may feel God's presence in this care and that soon, soon will come, his goodness will bring to fruition uh, joy and happiness for them. With confidence in God's goodness, let us stand and together offer to him our prayers and petitions. We begin by praying for our Pope and for all of our religious and civil leaders, that they may be people of hope and that they may always be open to God's guidance in their ministry. For this, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those for whom today is a time of difficulty and trial, that in the midst of their trials, they may always have the grace of hoping in God's goodness and the trust that he will bring to fruition his good works in them. For this, we pray to the Lord pray for ourselves and for all who have been given the gift of faith, that we may seek day by day to nourish that gift and to share the hope that is ours in a God of goodness and love. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions.
For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, me your unworthy servant, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk in your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. Ha 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two-meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow towards the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The Body of Christ. Love. 
freely poured let us be one in the lord see how my people have nothing to eat give them the bread that is shared life for the world let us be wine love freely poured let us be one in the Lord Let us pray. Governed by your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not in word or in speech, not just in word or speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 447 in the CBW, A Living Faith. Glory. 